everyone, you're with Christine and Ask Your Angels. And tonight we're doing a show on numerology. St. Augustine de Hippo wrote, Numbers are the universal language offered by the deity to us humans as confirmation of the truth. And tonight we're covering painting with numbers. We called it this because it's the association color has with numerology. And we have special guest. With us tonight is Gordon Sport. Hi, Christine. I'm glad Hi. to be here. Nice to have you here. Okay. So, <laughs> well, we got lots to talk about tonight. That's um, for sure. <laughs> so, Gordon, what is for people who aren't familiar with it? What is numerology? Well, numerology is a science. It is the oldest known science to mankind, and people basically say, "Well, who was the modern day master?" Well, 2,500 years ago, it was Pythagoras, the father of geometry, and it's for Pythagoras we owe the relationship of number to color to music. He was the one who discovered all three was the same vibration. So he was really the son of the sun god Apollo. He was brilliant, started the world's first university in Crotona in Italy. And uh, he was a brilliant numerologist. But that was only 2,500 years ago. I mean, there's Moses on the mountain. God gives him the two tablets and at the same time kicks in the Kabbalah. So that's going back a few years past Pythagoras. But then we have the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans were doing and practicing in written. This goes back in written history, 12,000 years. They were practicing not just numerology, astrology. They were masters. Now, Chaldea, as we know today, is Babylon or Iran, Iraq. So, in written recorded history, it is 12,000 years old. But really, is, is numerology used quite often with astrology? Do they go hand in yeah, hand? Yeah, they go hand in hand, as does the tarot deck as well. And when you mentioned the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. or, right, which is what we're talking about, we mentioned... Yeah. And he's up in the hill with the two tablets. I've never thought of this, but is that significant, that number 10? The fact that there were 10 commandments? To the Pythagoreans, yes. <laughs> 10 and Pythagoras is very, very special. Okay, really, basically, numerology goes from 1 to 9, and then you have the three master numbers, which differs because some books and the subjects say there's only two master numbers. There actually is three. Other books say there's actually basic 1 to 9 and then 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99. I call that watering down. If you have basically 9 numbers plus 3 master numbers, you have 12, which relates to the 12 signs of the zodiac. Right, okay. And the 12 months in a year. So, but it actually goes back further. I mean, really, when the caveman was doing the symbolism. I mean, it goes to the petroglyphs in our own native culture, but it goes back to, I mean, what is a petroglyph? It's just really the etchings in the caves. It was a story that was being told in symbolism, because mm -hmm. that's how it was done in those days. It was done by symbolism. Mm -hmm. And that takes you back to the caveman. But it actually goes back further. God had to create the universe. And when he created the universe, it took things like atoms and molecules. They're all numbered. And he stuck the atoms and the molecules together with the mud and the water and all that, and it formed a whole galaxy. But the entire thing was numbered before the astrologers came along and says, hey, that's Venus, that's Pluto, that's Mars. So it's the foundation, it's the DNA. You are made up of 70% water, H2O. I mean, all the elements, that's, they're all numbered. And the, the strands of DNA are all numbered. So when you understand numbers are quantitative, studying numerology takes you behind the scenes and that's mm -hmm. into the esoteric, not exoteric. Exoteric is for the masses, common knowledge. Esoteric is for the high priests, the initiates. Every number has two meanings, quantitative and the qualities that you possess. And he who understands numerology is the key to the door of the universe. As Pythagoras said, know thyself. And that's why I like what the what St. Augustine said, right? 
Pythagoras says, know thyself, and thou shalt know the universe. It's the key to the understanding of every principle in life. So where would we be without numerology then? Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> and you had started off with palmistry. Yes. I mean, everybody, every one of us has a degree of psychic ability. Some of us can make claims to fame like I was a fourth generation because my mother was and her mother was. Others can say, well, you know, on the way to the, the office, I just had this nasty car accident and I'm sitting up in an ambulance several hours later and I've got this great psychic ability and near-death experience. So a lot of the people can say that as well. For the rest of us, somewhere between 30 and 40, it usually, I'd say, kicks in. So for me, it was 31 years old, and I unfortunately had gone through a, a separation with my wife. And one of the girls felt sorry for me, and she gave me a book on palmistry. And that's, a, that's an odd thing to give your, your dad when he's going through a separation. Yeah, so I mean... Uh, I mean, why not how to find another woman? Well, this was the, actually the palmistry did that. Oh, well, there because you go. Because all of a sudden, I could sit with other women and talk about... Your future. Oh, <laughs> I see a nice, really wonderful Scottish bald-headed man in your future. Yes. It's looking good. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. And the thing was, they paid me money for it. <laughs> so I thought I had sort of like died and gone, gone to heaven. Wow. And I bet your daughter never dreamed that you'd get so no, much out of this book. <laughs> no. And really, it was an introduction to the sciences. Somehow it just, something will happen in your life. And to me, it was a palmistry, which was good, but the lines in your hands change every year. Yes, we did actually do a show on palmistry. Mm -hmm. So it's ever changing. Yeah. And so I was about to get back with my wife and she says, look, we will get back because we're a little daughter. And uh, when you, uh, you know, if you're going to come back, you know, reunite, please, put this nonsense, she called it nonsense, to bed. Otherwise, I don't want to have anything to do with you. So reluctantly, I said, okay, I'll, I'll put it on ice. You see, the door never closes. No. And one day, I waltzed into the world's largest bookstore downtown Toronto. And there, I mean, I'm, I worked for Bob Ray at that time. I would not Bob Ray personally, but it was his government of the day. And I thought, if he finds one of his managers in, you know, the occult section, I don't think <laughs> I don't think he'd be too too happy. But I was just I was drawn to this section. Something said, and I've got my, you know, nice three piece suit on, and I'm in there, and I'm looking for the video cameras as a Bob Ray sees this, so and <laughs> I'm in trouble. And I, I think when you have that that calling though yeah it it doesn't go away it, no. it can't continuously will call you and you're i understand yeah. that and i waltzed over to this section and there was divination and there was only 10 books on the subject and you bought all of them didn't no, you? i only no. bought one really? just just bought one and it happened to be the most difficult the most comprehensive the most difficult but i i, I bought it and i took it home and there was 450 pages in it and I read it all on Saturday, did my own wow. reading on Sunday, went back for volume two on Monday, which was the advanced stage of numerology. And that was really it for the first 10 years. I thought I better form an institute, which I did, the Numerology Institute of Canada. And one day I'm sitting there looking at my library of two books, and I thought, hmm, I know this is a good book. And it said everything. How can you, how you can find your perfect mate. How you can win the lotto. How you can change your life. And I'm saying, you know, initially before I bought the book, this is impossible. But I'm a civil engineer. And very skeptical. Civil engineers are usually skeptical. Have you won the lotto yet? Yes, I have. Get out. Yeah. Just small amounts, you know. 800 bucks, 600 bucks. I actually know which balls... Okay, we're going to go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually know which balls are going to drop before they drop when they pick two, pick three, and pick four. And wow. that, that, that's That's taken hundreds of years of investigation. So I had those two books, and I thought, you know, if you're going to be an institute, 
you better have some more knowledge in two books. So I started picking up books off the internet and going, every time I'd go to the the uh, the bookstore or in the States, I'd pick up another book. And my girl, my wife had passed away by that time by cancer. And uh, I'd pick up another book and my girlfriend would say, if you buy another book, I'm telling you, this relationship's over. She says, you can actually write a better book than half the ones you're buying. I says, I'm not that good. I says, I'm learning, I'm a student. But I gradually had 220 books on the subject. That's and why I asked, did you buy all those books in the store? Because I did yeah. read that you have, is it one of the largest yeah, in the world? In the world, yeah. yeah. And uh, when I liaised with the British Association, it's called AIN, Institute Numerology, and uh, between Britain and France, and they had 90 books, and they were so thrilled to meet the Numerology Institute of Canada, and they said, Gordon, just for your information, there's roughly 200 books, we have 90, well, I had 220 at that time, now I have 550, and I'm still shy by 300. Oh yeah, there's, yeah. there's almost a thousand books out there. Well, see, this is why you need to win the lotto to keep your collection going. Yeah, yeah. It's very admirable. Mm. <laughs> but I've learned a lot, and I'm still learning. I'm still a student. I mean, every day I learn something new. And it's the most fascinating subject. There is no psychic ability. People think I'm a psychic. I think, I'm a numerologist. I just happen to know more about you than you know about you. And I know what's happening every moment of your life. But it's not psychic ability. It's knowledge. Knowledge, right? Till we have a question. <laughs> With all the books that you have, um, do you find any differences in what people are writing about? Of course. <laughs> and when I teach, I mean, I do teach classes. I teach the correct method. We have Americans, not to knock the Americans, who always put the month first, then the day, then the year. And nothing gives me greater pleasure when I'm in the States telling them, you have it all. I'll have another word for it, but uh, <laughs> the wrong way around. <laughs> we have a lot of people from the States watching our show right now. That's okay. <laughs> but I mean, once upon a time, we had 13 months in the year. And then along came the Gregorian calendar. I mean, all you have to do is look at the sky. It's quite simple. Every 28 days, there's the moon. We had 13 months. There's nothing wrong with 13. So what I do is, there's only two numerologists in North America who do the correct method. And Andrew King from California was taught the same way I was taught. Day comes first. Month comes second, year comes first. And to my American friends, what I say is quite simple. It's a natural law of progression. You have the, you're running the Olympics. They've got the stopwatch on you. First we have 60 seconds. But you're still running. And then it becomes 60 minutes. And then you put them all together. You're still running for 24 hours. Then you have a day. Now you're running a super triathlon. And you ran for, you know, 31 days, so we call it a month. Mm -hmm. And then now you're still running for 12 months because you're going around the world, and now you have a year. So if, if God created it, day, month, and year, just like people often talk about colors, and they say, well, the color for this number is such and such, and the color for this, you have seven chakras in your body. Mm -hmm. You have a rainbow. God made the covenant quite easy. Look up in the sky, seven colors. If you can change that, come back and see me. <laughs> so when I teach, I always teach with hard facts. And I teach the proper method. And the proper method is day, month, and year. Because when you get into the detailed side, the progressed side of numerology, you can't put month first. It, it, it messes up everything. So it is unfortunate that the Americans, that's the way they were trained. And uh, I'm not picking on you. It's just that's the way it is. And I'm here to explain the correct method. And it's day, month, and year. So there is differences in some of the books. And then when you do the calculations for day, month, and year, which is your major number, what happens is there's different ways to add them up. Some people go across, I call it across the board, which is just the day, the month, and then 19, whatever. That is not correct. 
some people put the year first, then the month, then the day, and they do it in a column, tabulated. That is also not correct. Even though I have 30, 40 books that says that's the way it should be done. The correct method is you take the day you were born, single digit. Yeah, I was born on the 24th, so 2 and 4 is 6. I was born on the 7th month, so that is a single digit already. That's the second component. And the third is 1945. Yes, I'm kind of old. Uh, 1945 is 19, which is 10, which is 1. Then you have three single digits. You can add them up. And I back it up with mathematics. Because if the day I was born was a third, and the month I was born was a half, and the year I was born was a quarter, you cannot add them up. In other words, you can't go across the board because there's no way mathematically you can add a third to a quarter and a half unless you have a common denominator, which is number 12. Then, so that's what single digits are, common denominators. You just can't take the apple and the pear and the, and the peach and put them together unless you have a blender handy, then you get a glass of juice. I just worked out my numbers <laughs> while you were talking about that, and you know what? I'm I'm so shocked. It's seven. That's good. But That's seven spiritual. seven is my favorite number. Of course. I was told I had seven guardian angels. Mm -hmm. I drank a tea once, and it wasn't loose tea. It actually it was a tea bag. Yep. But left a solid seven mm -hmm. in the bottom of the cup. Seven has always resonated yeah. with me. But I mean, there's seven chakras, seven colors in the rainbow. There is wow. seven vowels, seven vowels in the English alphabet. Seven's a good number. Seven is dynamite, it's spiritual. Well, there anyone you go. Who, anyone who's a seven will be spiritual. They have and that's psychic why ability. you're with Christine and Ask Your Angels. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> with Gordon Sport. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so great. So, do we have questions? Okay. We have a couple of questions, but I've been kind of holding off. Mm -hmm. Um, oh. <laughs> somebody liked your comment about numbers, so they've asked, what, how do you find out what your best numbers are? And then there's a question, can math-challenged people learn numerology? Of course. <laughs> Basically, uh, the mo there's four aspects. I mean, there's many sub-lessons, but there's four major aspects. The most important is the day, the month, and the year, which represents 50% of your energy. You cannot change your day, month, and year of birth. It's fixed. It's called fate. What you do control is your life, and that's called destiny. Destiny is all the skills and all the talents you have from all of your previous lifetimes. And we look at the names to determine what major talents you have, to see if you're living up to your potential, what's weak and holding you back, and what's missing and how to get it. We go into the karma, help you get rid of your bad habits. And that allows me to do a career direction. Now, you can change your names. I have no questions left to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the names is called your expression. That's how you present yourself. You're presenting yourself right now dressed in orange and black. I am presenting myself dressed in gold. There's a little orange and black too oh, there. Yeah. But the idea is, that's presentation. And that's what expression means. Represents 30% of you. Now, here's the secret to numerology, God's breath. In Judaism, there are no vowels. It's all consonants in the Torah. There are no vowels in Judaism. Well, there is in the English alphabet. It's the breath of God. You see, that's why the Jewish people do not use the vowels, because it's God's Spirit, or the Holy Spirit. And that's the esoteric side of numerology, is to look behind the scenes and calculate what your soul urge, or your heart's desire is, and that's the last lesson. So you have your day of birth, very small, but very important when you're playing the lotto. Day, month, and yeah, year. We really need to talk about that. <laughs> day, month, and year, your most important number, your expression, your presentation, and your soul. These are the four major aspects in numerology. You control your life. You change one letter of your name. You drop a name. You marry a husband. You are a different person. So, in that respect, is it better for people to keep their maiden name? Does it we matter? We always do the maiden name because it's on the legal documents. In Canada, we call it an SIN. In America, we call it SSN. You can marry ten husbands. We'll never change your SIN or SSN. 
Okay. Good. Okay. Now the second question was about uh, Well that covered, the second one was about the math. And you the covered, math, yes. <laughs> my former that was a good girlfriend question. that was a very good question. When I met my former girlfriend, she took one look at me and was horrified. Because she had prayed and asked the angels to send us someone spiritual. And I'm standing before her and I says, well, I'm spiritual. She says, yeah, but you have no hair. <laughs> I says, hold on a minute. Did you ask for hair when you specify what you wanted? She says, no, I didn't. I says, so don't complain. <laughs> and then she had a comment about my age, but that was okay. But the thing that petrified her was the numbers. Uh, I mean, it was like coming out every pore of my body. And she says, I hate math. I, I'm, I'm scared of math. I actually got as far as grade eight. And she owned her own business. But she got as far as grade eight. And she says, I just, I don't see this relationship going anywhere. No. I says, don't worry, we're going to work on it. So initially, as we worked together, she used to use a calculator. She couldn't add up the numbers. She just used the calculator. Well, it didn't take her long to become the Northeastern Institute of Numerology for the Eastern Seaboard of the U.S. of A. Wow. I took the fear of numbers. It is the easiest of all the occult sciences to learn. It does not require psychic ability. It just requires a little bit of patience. And as you work with it, more is given to you. It takes the fear of, you know, mathematically challenged people away in a heartbeat. And we have another question. Somebody's asked, why do I always see the number 11? Does the <laughs> 11 mean something for me to know? Yes, Is of this course. Daniela? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was going to ask you this, yeah. because, and I've been waiting, but this came up this morning. Number 11 is the name of Jesus. J-E-S-U-S, -S, numerology-wise, totals 11. Now, Jesus was called the teacher, of course, naturally, but the word that was attached was enlightenment, total 65, which is 11. That's a big, long word, so let's cut it short, cut it down to the word light. Is 29, which is 11. What color is light is white. Mm -hmm. And the word white totals 29, which is 11. And here's the weird thing. Black is also number 11. People say black and white are opposites. Yeah. When you look at them, they're different. But it's the same number, number 11. White paper, black ink. Mm -hmm. Out of the darkness, black came the light, mm -hmm. white. They kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. It's also energy. E N R E R G Y is 3811. Now, I'm from Britain, so naturally we have ley lines. I've just been watching some great things on the you know, Discovery Channel and the History Channel, all about ley lines. The word ley lines is number 11. The word druid is number 11. High priests of the Celtic nations. 11 is the pillars, the doorway, the gateway. The entrance way to the temple. All around the world is these gorgeous temples, maybe 30 or 40 pillars, but there's always two major ones at the front door. 11 is a portal. 11 is the entrance. Walk through the doors into the rites initiation, or on the other side of your angels, ascended masters, spirit guides, you are being taught. You, in turn, will then enlighten other individuals. As an 11, you'll be an old soul. It's a special number, and it's the entrance of the spiritual realms. 22 is the second number, which is mastery, and of course, naturally, 33 is Christ consciousness, but the official J name of Jesus was Master, 22, Jesus, 11, 33, Christ consciousness, who was 33 years old when he died on the cross. We can discuss that some other time. That's a subject of discussion. And <laughs> there's 33 degrees in Freemasonry. Buddha's name, Muhammad's name, Krishna names, all comes out to 33. Wow, so it's, it's a great thing if you're seeing 11s oh, everywhere. People see it all the time. It's amazing. See, now, if this is the person <laughs> I thought asked that question, mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact she is a beautiful, beautiful soul. And, uh, and made these angel earrings, okay? Mm -hmm. Angel earrings by Daniela. If you like these earrings you see tonight, 
Christine at askyourangels.ca. I'll put you in touch. Okay, we have another question. Uh, just some comments that have come up. Um, 11. Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. 11. Yes. Mm -hmm. They That's went down up. on the 11th. Mm -hmm. That's come up before. That's been now, all over the internet. Is it 11 9 or 9 11? 9-11? It's 11-9. Yes, precisely. Ah, because the way I see, yes. Because 11 was the light. Now, 11 of September, 11 was America was awakened. That's what light means. Mm -hmm. It was the end of the, I call it, complacency. Mm -hmm. Because, unfortunately, you know, we had become complacent. So, it was the end of complacency by enlightenment. Yes, it was nasty, it was vicious, but it brought us to realization that we have to become vigilant mm -hmm. and aware of what's happening around us. But I mean, naturally, because it is and did happen in America, it's always called 9-11, mm -hmm. you know, following their suit of month first, day second. But, it, I mean, it doesn't matter which way you look at it. It was the end of the old, the new was in. Mm -hmm. I think it brought people closer together, too. Mm -hmm. Caring oh, more lot. about your neighbor, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a whole bunch of questions <laughs> all ready to ask. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Then I think it's time you enlightened us on the lotto. <laughs> Well, I mean, you did ask, what are the benefits of obtaining a numerology, numerology analysis? Okay. Yes. Basically, it teaches you to look at yourself. You know, what is wrong is that so many of us are so, so gifted, and we don't realize it. Mm -hmm. So many of us never live up to the full potential. So I am like a little match, and I light a little fire, and I spring you into action. So the idea is, if I notice that you have skills and talents and you're nodding your head in disbelief, I'll show you, you know, yes, you're not living up to your potential. And what happens is, as people work with the energy, all of a sudden, they start to awaken. Yes. We all have weaknesses. And what I do is, using color, I give you the tools, the colors, to strengthen all those weaknesses. Because I have weaknesses as well. We're all here to learn. This is the biggest classroom in the universe. And basically, we're all here to learn. So again, using color, I show you how to draw it into your life. And then, of course, naturally, the karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. If you do have any karma which holds you back from achieving success, I show you how to get rid of those things that's holding you back. And then, of course, that allows me to give career counseling. And then, I usually tell you 99 years into the future. So, really, numerology is a one-shot deal. Once you've had it done, you don't have to come back next year because I've already told you 99 years into the future. But so many people want to win the lotto. And for 30... Well, because I personally feel that's what's holding me <laughs> back. <laughs> well, for 30 years, I didn't win. And it's rather embarrassing when you're on TV and on the radio and someone says, how much have you won, Gordon? And I said, zero. And they say, why? And I said, I have a limiting belief system. I have some weaknesses. And one of them was a very narrow-minded limiting belief system. And that was, you see, I happen to be a five. It's called the center of the universe. It takes on all the skills and the talents of the other eight numbers. So... But it also takes on the bad habits. And it's called the hisms. And the first of hism was a workaholic. Oh boy. I mean, 80 hours, 90 hours was not strange to me. But then I had a genetic disorder. I was born with celiac disease. And then at the age of 14, my father and his wisdom gave me a belt of scotch to turn me into a man. And he turned me into an alcoholic. And I managed to drink for 45 years. So for the first 59 years of my life, it was up and down like a, I would say, toilet seat. And eight years ago, with the prayer, the great invocation, I stopped drinking overnight. And I've gone 
we're now um, known in over 50 countries. So that's called, you know, living up. But it's a limiting belief system. And the limiting belief system, I've already done the alcohol bit. I've done the work bit. And I did not want to do the gambling bit. Now, that's not to say my clients haven't won. The highest has been 65,000. But I have clients winning hand over fist. They actually give me 10%. They'll come up and give me a $100 bill because I just won a 1000 last week. And then three years ago, my wife, because I had gone through some massive growth, with some famous teachers from an North North. I uh, now I'm a member of the Association of Transformational Leaders out of St. Paul, Minnesota, which is a spin-off of the Transformational Leadership Council, which is from The Secret. And six of the members of The Secret are part of the ATL. So it was through that that I changed my belief system. I'm as worthy as anyone else to win the lotto. And I'd been studying 10 years earlier how the balls drop in the pick three and pick four, now there's a pick two. And this system is correct 95% of the time. I was only able to master it once a month, but I mean, 800 bucks is not bad once a month. That's all right. And, <laughs> but really, what's the difference between pick two or pick three or pick four than pick five and pick six? It's a system. Basically, with pick three, all 1,000 balls have gone through their life expectancy, which is 2.75 years. Obviously, pick four is 27 and a half years. Pick five is 275 years. And pick six is 2,750 years. If you can live 2,750 years, you'll win the lot of 649. <laughs> Don't forget about the next one, the super, you know, the Powerball, or, well, the, no, I shouldn't say Powerball, I mean Lotto Max, because that just made that 27,500 years. Well, wow. <laughs> I can give you your numbers. <laughs> we have a question. Okay, we got somebody that uh, came in a little later, but he's asked a question. Um, why do I keep picking seven or nine first? Why is that a number that they would pick first? <clears throat> well, number seven is spiritual. And, I mean, really, you got to look at the symbolism of seven, the seven vowels, the seven chakras in the body, the seven colors in the rainbow. Is very spiritual and it's called asking questions. Sevens will ask the questions because they must understand all of life's principles. So it's usually when, where, why, what and how. But very deeply spiritual and some are religious and it's perfectionism. Nine is God's number. It's a completion of the numbers and it's a number for God and basically the English alphabet from A to Z totals 351, which is 9. This planet is held together with 9 Teutonic plates. And there is 81 elements in physics. Ma natural nine. elements. The circumference of the Earth, the Moon and the Sun in miles is 9. The distance from here to there is also 9. But it's also is benevolence. And what happens is, number nine is giving back to humanity. When you've gone all through the range of numbers, you got to number nine, you're going to find all your healers, your doctors, the healthcare industry, they're nines. But it's also a diamond word. You see, words have power, and the word money, M-O-N-E-Y, totals nine, as do the three vowels, total nine, and that's called a diamond word. So these people can make money hand over fist, but the thing about it is, money has power, sheer power, but it's not materialism. Hoarding money is not going to benefit you one iota. Mm -mm. Benevolence of money is what it's all about. As you, you know, when you give, I mean, it comes don't back. It comes back. Mm -hmm. So there are certain words that are called diamond words, and money is a diamond word, just like the word success, which is number eight. And number eight is also a diamond, diamond sparkle. People who are eights born on the 8th, the 17th, and the 26th are going to own their own business. If they do not own their own business, they are not living up to the potential. Now, it's waiting for them. I just have to tell them when. But it is success. Now, you don't get me wrong. You have the right of choice, the right of free will. You don't want to own your own business? At least you're going to be the boss, the manager, this the exec in somebody else's business. Eight is the cream of the crop. They're going to the top. 
I can't remember what number you were. I, I had something done. Um, I have a friend who does numerology, and he did something that tells the type of person you are. Mm, that's what so I, I don't know if this makes sense or not, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm a three six nine. Yes. What does that mean? That's the uh, up here. You get your head in the clouds. So in other <laughs> words, no, basically Great. no, no. One four seven. You get your feet in the ground. Okay. These are stable people. You know, they're grounded. I'm unstable. <laughs> no, no, no. You're the same as me. And now everybody knows, Gordon. <laughs> 258 are the emotions. 369s are the intellects. So that's why I'm called a walking encyclopedia. Because I'm a 369 as well. And are you? Yeah, I have the... Oh, my, well, my... I'm honored to be a 369. <laughs> yeah, it just means you've got your head in the clothes. It means you're always thinking. It means you're so close to God, so close to the angels. I mean, that's, you're up there. So oh, that's beautiful. It is not, it is not it's... negative. There is no such thing as negativity. I mean, people go crazy over Friday the 13th. Do you know how many people are not going to go to work this coming Friday? That's crazy. Um, <clears throat> no disrespect to those who aren't. Um, is... They all go bike riding somewhere. <laughs> Is is thirteen? I mean, I don't think so. But people do think thirteen is an unlucky number. If it's not, do you know where that came from? Why do people perceive that as unlucky? Well, it's maybe when the Romans got into the Gregorian calendar. I mean, why? How can you argue with God? The moon is up there every twenty eight days. Women have tw have a period every twenty eight days. Our, medis, our natives, when they build the healing lodges, have 13 pillars. Now, unfortunately, yes, in Chinese, 13 is 4. 4 in Cantonese is a two-letter word, S-I, pronounced she, which is death. Yes, death of the old. It's not death, death. It's a rebirth. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I have a pin on. That's beautiful, by the way. I, is, did it's your girlfriend plus. make that? No, I was a previous owner 230 years ago. I was at a, a psychic fair in Stratford, and a lady came for a reading, and she said, uh, I was speaking to the angels last night, and they are annoyed because you haven't written your first book in numerology and to give you back the pin. I'm expecting a pin, not a brooch. <laughs> this is 230 years old. It's hallmarked, and I was the previous owner. In a it, past life? In a past life. It came across oh. the Atlantic Ocean, ended up in St. Jacob's. She bought it, had it for 20 years. An angel of the Lord comes here and says, you're going to meet Gordon. Tell him to write his book and give him back his pen. And I was going to ask, have you written this book? Because you certainly, to me, you should be doing it. I am in the process. I'll be on the shelves this fall. I'm working with Did learning... I mention I'm a book editor, too? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm working with Learning Strategies Corporation, the largest metaphysical teacher in North America. I am their official numerologist, and we're putting the world's first numerology course on the shelves this fall. Oh, I have wow. written all the text. There'll be nine CDs, eight by me, and a paraliminal by the owner of the company, which is Paul Sheely, who's from The Secret. And Paul does all the paranormals. That's when you go to bed at night and you just listen and you're taught. So this is a multi-million. I mean, they invested a quarter million dollars in this just in me. That's brilliant. So I'm I'm set for life. So, so can you can you tell people how they can? What's your website? How can they reach you so that they can keep an eye on it mm -hmm. to know when this is out? Sure, it's quite easy. I mean, if you're going to make it simple, why not call it www numerology where am I living Canada dot com www numerology Canada dot com and you might as well call yourself the numerology institute of Canada for my email <laughs> <laughs> so my email is numerologist double one eleven at gmail dot com wow oh, that's so exciting good for you wow that's amazing and we were talking outside before the show about druids. Mm -hmm. We talk a little bit about that because that I love this story. Yeah, basically, I was a child raised in the outskirts of Glasgow, which I was mentioning was the one of the most violent cities in Europe. Uh, I mean, if you were from Glasgow, no one wanted to know you. That was way back in the sixties because of the shipbuilding industry, and then. Uh, 
over as I came to North America. It got cleaned up. It became the European capital culture. But my village was eight miles from the city center of Glasgow, and it was called Old Kilpatrick. St. Patrick, a Welshman at the time, a child, was captured by the Irish and went over to uh, Ireland, put in slavery. He escaped when he was 13, came back, settled in my village called Old Kilpatrick. The Romans, of course, conquering Britain, settled in the village too. I was only a child that led up the hills, but I didn't realize I was playing on one of the biggest Druid sites in all of Europe. It was unearthed by the Europeans, the, the English Parks Commission, the Scottish Parks Commission, and it's a massive site. And you can virtually see 30 miles in every direction from this one site, but that's what I played. And I was back, I didn't know the site existed at the time, but I was back with my American girlfriend at the time, and she wanted to see some Druids. And uh, I didn't know she'd invoked the power of the Druids, but she stood in the headstone. And uh, of course, naturally, every snapshot I took, there's a Druid, there's a shadow of a Druid. This was on a sunny day. And the same thing happened to me. I, but you see, the Druids were the high priests of the Celtic nations. I mean, we have Welsh, Welsh Druids, we have English Druids, Irish Druids, and Scottish Druids, but they actually covered all the way, th all of Scandinavia, Italy, France, Germany, one third of the globe was Druids. And of course, uh, it was Celtic, or the Celts, but their high priests were called the Druids. They were called the Oak Men. And it's funny, I always just was a fascinated with Oak. I loved to work with Oak. My house was trimmed with oak, and they used to blend into the oak trees. It's sort of like, you know, the the, oak, the, the grove where you see the mistletoe and the, you know, it's another druid symbol. But they just blended into the trees, the oak trees. And so druids and oaks have got a lot strong attachment. And I was just naturally, but I mean, people just take one look at me. I was in, in America and someone says, hi, druid. Oh, how do you know I'm druid? I, I can sense it. And then, of course, even in Peru, I was in Peru, and the shaman, I mean, 10 million people in Lima, I meet one shaman, and the first thing he looks at me, says, welcome home, druid. So, obviously, druids are fascinating. I mean, they were teachers. They were very spiritual people. They were just, well, high priests. And you know? you're still a teacher. Yes, yeah. and still a student. <laughs> <laughs> we were always students, yeah. and I agree with that's why we're here, is to learn. Yeah. That's why we come back. Mm -hmm. This is my last lifetime, but... Is I'm, it? Oh, yeah, I've been kind of like here since, like, <laughs> like the first insect crawled on this planet. I, I'm one of those stubborn ones, didn't want to let go, you know. So. They've, they've marked me back. I, I know as far as Jesus' time, apparently mm -hmm. my friend was there with me and yeah. helped me with a bad stomach or something. No, Atlantis, Mu, Lemuria, I don't know. I like to think I'm getting near the end. I don't think mm -hmm. I'm quite there. That's what I do when I do an analysis. You have nine... Well, you can tell us oh, yes. how much time we have oh, left. Yeah. Well, it all can depends Can you just jot that down now? I won't tell you. All, all how depends how I stubborn they have left. <laughs> all depends. As I look at the nine lessons, there's only nine basic lessons. Half the people are missing four of the lessons. They're very young souls. Some poor souls are missing five. Now, when you've got less and more under your belt, if you're only missing three lessons, you're a lot older. Two lessons, a lot older. One lesson missing, almost there. And all nine lessons, you are, what we say, an old soul. You've can, earned can the you stripes. Can you share what the lessons are? Or is that something? Well, num number one is, is being creative. Number two is being diplomatic and empathetic. Number three is being artistic. Number four is being organized and grounded to Mother Earth. Number five is picking up a little bit of everything. These people have to learn to focus. They're all over the map. Number six are usually in the lawyer profession and commerce. Number seven are the spiritualists. Number eight are the bankers and commerce. And number nine are the healthcare workers and the healing arts. Once you've learned all of those nine lessons, you're an old soul. So I was never, I wasn't a lawyer, but I think I'm still at seven. From what <laughs> you just okay. said, yeah. it's seven again. <laughs> oh, you don't learn them in any particular order. Oh, no? No, 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 no. You'd be one this year, 
nine the next time and it can take you a hundred lifetimes to master one of these lessons it feels like I'm still at seven. Uh -huh. though. Well, what would seven be? How many more times do I have to come back? Or? Well, I, what I have to do is I, <laughs> as I do the analysis, I see what's missing. Oh, okay. And then we determine how many lifetimes it's, you know. But it depends on your stubbornness. I'm getting tired, I just got to say. <laughs> <laughs> now, the second way to become an old soul is to be an 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my soul happens to be an 11. I'm missing one lesson, but an old soul shouldn't be missing anything but you see what happened was when I passed away the last time they actually gave me this thing called a set of angel wings and to boot they gave me some golf clubs <laughs> and I said no no guys you know uh, I have to go back and I said why do you want to go back to earth and I said well there's a big party coming off on the 21st of December 2012 and I've waited 25,000 years for this and I have to be there and they tried to plead me. They got the contract out, the Akashic Records, and they said, look, you signed the contract. You're done. Go play golf. There's your angel wings. Go. I said, I'm going People back. are probably thrilled to know there's golf in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and so they said, look, there's 100,000 souls waiting to take your place. I said, I'm going back. I said, okay, stubborn you are. We're going to take away one of your lessons. So you blend in with the rest of the population. Mm -hmm. But 2012 is five. Five is change. It is not the end of the world. And no. what we're going to change is going to happen on the 21st, which is number three, which is called the word. The word is number three. The soul of the word is number 11. So it is 21 three. It is the 12th month, which is the second three. Three and three is six. And five for 2012 is 11, which is enlightenment. We are raising the bar, we're raising the vibration. Instead of using 10% of what we have here, we're going to be using 30, at least 35%. See, there's so many of us that are so excited about this because we can feel it coming. And it there's a sense, coming. there seems to be a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a lot of us feel we're here to help prepare people or, or bring them. That Their is your vibrations job. up. That is your job. That is my job. So, just out of curiosity, what would the difference between twelve twenty one and twelve twelve? Well, when you do the calculations, the it's called you know going into the progressed. I know it looks the same, but it misses those nine magic days. Me and Chris both have a birthday on twelve twelve. This yeah, year. it misses nine magic days. Mm -hmm. So what you're getting is a reverse image twenty one twelve, okay, and that's where palindromes come in. Mm -hmm. See, this only happens so so. Well. I mean, I can go into palindromes. I was asked to do a, a, an article once uh, for the twentieth of February two thousand and two, and on the uh, 02 as the 2nd of February of 2002 the Americans cut they, they, they spent 350 million dollars making a very spiritual place and they cut the ribbon at two minutes past two I was in Austria watching a Nazi marry uh, a Jew in Austria there was over 500 guests it was a multi-millionaire's wedding they were so rich but again they had gone at 2nd of February or 2 or 2 and this is why when I said about day month and year the real date was the 20th which is 2 0 the reef the opposite is 02 so and it was 2002 it was called a triple palindrome and it's only happened 12 times in history it's not happened 12 times, it's only happened 10 times right now. But basically, 4 times AD, 6 times BC, and the next one is the 21st of uh, 2012. And then 891 years later, which will be the 30th of March, 3003, 6 times AD, 6 times BC, never, ever, ever to happen again it is totally impossible again 12 12 signs of the zodiac so 
the Toronto the uh, the Toronto Star had written an article that they were not they were saying roughly nine hundred years. It's eight hundred ninety one, which is nine, which is God, and the other intervals are every hundred and ten, which is eleven, which is Jesus. <laughs> Everything is numbered, and you understand. I mean, this is once you get involved in numerology, you want. I mean, you'll be driving behind the car in front of you, analyzing the car license plate. You'll be looking at your social insurance number, your credit card numbers, your house number. You're going to have a nice house number. Put a six in it. Six is wealth. No way. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm laughing because the house before this one, and I always joke about it because it's like we put an offer and we didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would say, how would it look for someone who talks and works with angels has the number 666? Beautiful. That's what it had. Beautiful. This explains a lot. <laughs> six is the cosmic mother. The, I'm a six. Well, we didn't get the house, Gordon. It's yeah, not that beautiful. But I mean, <laughs> it's called the cosmic mother. People who are sixes have open door policies and shoulders to cry on. They solve, so if you're born on the 6th, the 15th, or the 24th, you solve everybody else's problems except your own. But mothers look after their children and protect it. And secondly, when I need something, it, it materializes. So 666 six, six is three sixes, which is 18, which is nine. Nine is God. What about the Lucifer? three sixes on Damien's head? What's that all about? <laughs> that's just, a, that's Hollywood. <laughs> And, and and it's like changing your name. I mean, part of what I do, I try. If you're going to have some good letters in your name, have an H as in Christine, okay? Yeah. Or a Q, or a Z for the Americans, or Z as in Canada. H, Q, and Z or Z are the money management letters. No H's, no Q's, no Z's, no money management skills. Unless you're born on the 8th, the 17th, or the 26th. Told 20th. you. Don't, don't I told you it was your karma. So, he, 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 here's Anthony. Anthony has this gorgeous name. It's a beautiful name. All of a sudden, he calls himself Tony. Oh. He negates the influence to manage his finances. Catherine calls herself Kate. Timothy, thank goodness he owns a whole bunch of donut chains because he calls himself Timmy. <laughs> Elizabeth has an H and a Z calls herself Betty you take these beautiful names and you go chop 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 and you wonder why you're not living up to your potential I heard this you know it's there you have it use it who's not going to want to contact Gordon after this seriously <laughs> you should give them your info again <laughs> once again very simple www.numerologycanada it is the Numerology Institute of Canada, of course, but the website, uh, or the Gmail, is for our email address, is numerologist11, the 11, at gmail.com. And if the telephone number is 416-406-1984. What's that? Orson Welles. Orson Welles. Oh, right. Okay. 416-406-1984. And I didn't choose the 1984. My bell gave it to me. But your, you know, your house number, your telephone number, they all mean something. Does it mean something that we both have the birthday 1212? Of course, it gives you a better alignment. Now, I mean, people say prophecy. What is prophecy? Wow, that's very psychic. Prophecy. Okay, let me think. I am going to prophesize right now. Tomorrow is Thursday. Am I good? <laughs> well, you're brilliant. <laughs> How about next month being August? Yeah, That's two that for works. two. How about next year being 2013? Three for three. All I need to know, I know what you're doing every single day of your life. All I need to know from you is what day you were born and what month. That's it. I don't need to know the year. I don't need to know your names. That just gives me more information. Two little things. Day and month of birth. You tell me that. I'll tell you what you're doing every day. Question. <laughs> okay. The calendar has changed over the year. Precisely. So how does the current calendar compare to the old calendar when you're dealing with numerology? 
Unfortunately, I haven't gone back to the old calendar. I, but people say, okay, I'm Spanish, I'm Italian, I'm French. I have a different alphabet from you. Yes, I know you do. There's only one set of numbers. It is a unifying factor of every language on this planet. And if I had more time, yes. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm into so many aspects. That, well, I'm uh, thinking we're definitely going to have you back, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> So, now, when you change your name, I mean, in Quebec, it's against the law to change your name when you get married. And has been for the last 15 years. It's also the same in some of the Asian countries and East, Far Eastern countries. Who said you have to change your name? When you change your name, you drop your power base. You've gone from a maiden name to a married name. You take on the responsibilities of the marriage name. The married name the husband loves you. But he forgot to tell you about the bag of garbage he's got on his shoulders. It's called his name. It's only a bag of garbage when his name conflicts with your name. He may have some karma. And all of a sudden you've taken on his name and you have this bag of garbage. I won't get into details, okay? But this has been ongoing for years where I've said to him... I didn't have this issue That's until right. you came along, as Precisely. wonderful as it is. Mm -hmm. But I said, it's got to be your karma. You yeah. have to have brought this with you. Yes. Now it's been confirmed. Thank you so much, <laughs> Gordon. <laughs> now, what do you do about it? You don't get rid of the husband. You work things well, out. Yeah. <laughs> it, what, what you do is you recognize that you have something to deal with. I mean, that's what a union of two souls is, is working out issues. Mm hmm and that's what makes you grow and grow. And you and grow. learn from those yes. too, right? I mean, you're not going to learn from having a golden spoon or a silver spoon in your mouth. No. You're and gonna, I say you're that gonna to You're going to learn people. from the school of hard knocks. And I have gone through 59 years of hard knocks. Yeah. And when someone says to me, it can't be done, I look at them between the eyes and I say, don't say no can't, won't, and don't. Because this secret is all about mm -hmm. ask and thou shalt receive. You don't need a book. You don't need a, a DVD. You just have to read the Bible. God's greatest gift to mankind is called the Bible. And the translation of the Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. It's a guidebook. It's God's gift. There are more secrets in that Bible than there is in any other book written to this day. It was given to you to learn from. Not the way the church has put the fear of God into us. God is loving. Yes. It is not about, I'm better than you are. It's, understand the Bible. Whether it be the Quran or whatever Bible, the Torah, understand the teachings because they were encrypted with so much knowledge. I, I mean, I, I, I spent years studying the Bible. And if you want to know the secrets of life, it's right there in the Bible. It's called numerology. Numerology crosses all boundaries, everything. And that's why it's so fascinating. I need another thousand years to learn it, because <laughs> there's so much You don't have another thousand, you said you weren't coming back. I know. <laughs> but it's funny, I just started and uh, connect with your angels workshop, and one of the things that I teach people is that you have to have these challenges, because those challenges will lead to victories. Precisely. And every victory brings a lesson. Mm -hmm. every, I mean, I've had a really rough history, too. But I look at his blessings. Mm -hmm. How fortunate am I to have all this stuff happen in my life for me to learn and my soul to grow? Mm -hmm. I mean, my first wife had cancer and she passed away. My second wife, two years ago, was diagnosed in August with cancer and she had her breast removed and a new one reconstructed. And the first thing she looked at me was, boy, you can choose your wives. And I says, wait a minute, I'm with you. You're a survivor. That's the difference. Versus wife number one, 
who wished to move on, mm -hmm. versus wife number two, who was determined to stay. Now, when she was in the hospital, of course, naturally having the operation, I had to join her in with a massive heart attack just to keep her company. That was good of you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it was a talk of the Toronto Western, you know. <laughs> Wife's in IC, husband's in emerge with a massive heart attack. And of course, naturally, six weeks later, I had a stroke and lost the use of my hand. You know, I had my spine snapped in two. Actually, broken in two. I was in a brace for nine months. I'm perfectly healthy. It's just little challenges. Little challenges. <laughs> um, for those of you who have joined us here with the Ask Your Angels talk show, and we are with Gordon Stewart, and we're talking about numerology. And there's so much to cover. Oh, I can go evenings, on for years. And the evenings. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and uh, we sh we could do a marathon maybe. We'll mm -hmm. just keep it going for uh, 20, yeah. how many hours? No, we'll do a yeah, six, sure. three, three day marathon. Yeah. We haven't done that yet. No, no. It'll be all right. But um, actually, it is, it is the end of our show. Yeah. But this has been fantastic. I, you've been a joy to have on the show. Thank you. And I know we have a lot more to cover, so we'll have you back for sure. Okay, if you'd okay. like to come back. Uh -huh. without, a, without a doubt. Okay, and uh, and then I can, you know, t tell you how my lottery turned out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thanks so much for joining us tonight, and uh, thank you, Gordon. And You're all of welcome. you have a wonderful evening. Bye.